network topology in the sense how exactly we are arranging the systems the major problem with the van that you need to remember is since the area is more so the data transmission speed will be very less when we compare to the LAN I should have the terminator at the both the ends that's mandatory when I am using the bus topology Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the session 5 on computer networks. Suppose if you have not subscribed to the channel, please click on the subscribe button and please click on the like button too. Guys, before I start the session for all of you today, I would like to give you a small recap on what I have done in all the previous sessions. Let's take a quick look and then go to the topic. The first thing that we started is what is network? Then followed by, we started what is ARPANET. What is ARPANET? Then after that, we understood what is internet and also we understood what is interspace. Internet and interspace is what we have discussed. Along with that, we also discussed what is bandwidth and what is data transmission rate. What is that we discussed? What is bandwidth and what is data transmission rate? So this is what we discussed in the session one and then followed by that, we also discussed we also discussed something called transmission media we discussed something called transmission media or transmission medium so what exactly should we remember about transmission medium so please understand it's very interesting so we have something called guided and unguided we have something called guided and unguided when it comes to guided, please remember we have something called twisted pair. We have something called twisted pair. In that twisted pair, we have two different cables again. So one is shielded twisted pair. That is what I will call it as a STP. Shielded twisted pair. Another one is unshielded twisted pair that is what i will call it as a utp then after that we have one more that is coaxial cable so guys in this i have thin net in this i have thin net another one is thick net so guys so two types of cables that i have thin net another one is thick net so fine what is the next one i have i have fiber optics i have fiber optics I have in the guided this is what I should remember when I speak about the guided media so fine what is the next thing I have I have unguided when it comes to unguided please remember we also discuss something called infrared we discuss something about infrared and also we discuss something about radio waves what is that next bit radio waves we discuss radio waves and also we discuss microwaves we discussed about microwaves did we start there no we also discussed something called satellite we also discussed something called satellite so this is what we have discussed when it comes to the transmission medium so please understand it's very important to understand how exactly the data is getting transmitted from one device to another device so fine we understood that so what else we discussed we discussed something called network devices we discussed something called network devices when it comes to the network device we started discussing with a switch and also we started discussing with a modem along with that we started discussing we we also discussed about router we also discussed about gateway okay very important uh, network device along with that we also discussed about Wi-Fi cards we also discussed about Wi-Fi cards so this is what we have discussed till now this is a small uh, recap what we have done till now so guys it's time for all of us to understand what we have for the day so we have something called types of networks after discussing the types of network we have something called network topologies what is exactly topology is all about Network topology in the sense how exactly we are arranging the systems. That's what I will be discussing in the network topology. All right. So let me start the concept. So I think all of you know about it. Let me not spend more time on this. So you see, you, know, you would have studied this from the you know, 
and our fifth standard, sixth standard, and seventh standard, all those days, you no, know, you would have studied this. But let me tell you what exactly it is. So we have LAN, local area network. What exactly local area network is all about? If I want to set up a network for a limited space, limited area within the building, so the best suitable network is what I will call it as local area network. And also it supports for a minimum number of computers. I cannot have a you know, large amount of numbers in my network. So that's why I will go or I will get into this kind of network. The advantage of LAN, advantage of LAN is since the area is very less, since the area is very less, the data transmission speed will be very high. Since the data is very less, I repeat, since the data is very less, the error rate is also very less whenever I'm using the LAN. If you are setting up your own network within the building, then I will call that as a LAN. So please remember that. So the next one that I have is metropolitan area network. So if I am spreading out my network for the entire city, then I will call that as a metropolitan area network. So what is that I will call? I will call that as a metropolitan area network is what you need to remember. So what will be the geographical area that it covers? It covers up to 5 kilometers to 50 kilometers of region. If you are establishing or if you are able to form the network in the region that is 5 to 50, then I will call that as a metropolitan area network. So fine. The purpose of metropolitan area network is to sharing of hardware and software resource among its users obviously it is a general advantage that we will get you know if we are forming the network that we have already discussed and then for example cable tv network that's a very important point that you need to remember usually whenever i say metropolitan area network the first thing that it should come to your mind is a cable tv network so this is one of the best example that we can remember metropolitan area network all right uh, the next one that we have is WAN. Again, uh, no famous topic when it comes to the network that is WAN. Suppose, let me just put it in a simple words. If you have the collection of LANs and if you are trying to collect, connect the different LANs and you will be forming the WAN. I repeat, if you are trying to connect the different LANs that forms the WAN is what you need to remember. So guys, the major problem with the van that you need to remember is since the area is more so the data transmission speed will be very less when we compare to the LAN and since the area is more the date error rate will be more when we compare to the LAN. So that's what you need to remember when it comes to the van. So van forms the internet. Van forms the internet is what you need to remember by connecting different types of LANs that we have. All right, let's check. Uh, let's have a comparison between the LAN and WAN quickly. So LAN in the sense local area network, wide area network. Diameter is not more than few kilometers when it comes to LAN. That's what you need to remember. The space is very limited when we compare to the LAN. But when it comes to the LAN, it, it spans across the country. So that's what you need to remember when it comes to the WAN. All right, the total data transmission rate, okay at least several mbps but when it comes to when it comes to van the data rate is less compared to the lan why because the reason because of the reason so when we compare when we compare the lan with the van so lan will have the highest data transmission rate the same way the complete ownership will be owned by a single organization but it's not like that when it comes to the van the last point error you will have very low i mean like you know error rate will be very less when it compared to the lan but when it comes to the van you'll have more number of errors because it's a combination of a different number of lands obviously it will be more this is the brief uh, comparison between the lan and van the next actual picture starts from now so guys we have topologies what exactly the topologies is all about Topologies is all about the different arrangement of systems what we have. 
different arrangement of systems what we have if i arrange the systems in a different different way i will start giving the name for the different arrangements what we have done so that is what we are trying to understand under the concept of topologies when it comes to the concept of topologies we have different types of topology the first one that we have is bus topology and the second one is star ring mess and tree topology each topology has got its own uniqueness and its own features advantages and disadvantages it's up to us and it's up to the situation what is the best topology that we can implement to that particular situation is what we need to think so to do that we need to understand the in and out of each and every topology that we have listed out here let me start with the bus topology when it comes to the bus topology the first thing that you should understand is all the systems are connected to one single wire all the systems are connected to one single wire is what you need to remember so here it works in the concept of hub whenever the system wants to communicate with this system so the message should enter to this channel so what happens is so only i need to connect it to this i need to send the message to this system but what happens the problem of this topology is it works like a hub whenever i send a message instead of sending it only to this system it will broadcast the message to all the system whatever we have connected to that particular network so unnecessarily i will be keeping all the systems busy by getting or by receiving the unwanted messages which is sent by other machines those who we have those we have in the network is what you need to observe suppose if this cable is not working the entire network is gone so that is the major drawback that we have when it comes to the concept or bus topology so that is one of the important thing that you need to remember one more thing you need to understand it's very easy to extend the network and it's very easy to implement the network and it is also not so expensive when we compare to all other topologies too so this is what you need to remember when it comes to bus topology let me just uh, run through the points what i have listed here the linear bus topology consists of main run cable that's what they are speaking about this cable all the nodes are connected to the linear cable of course what are you going to connect is up to you file server workstation peripherals it yes, depends on the network in the bus network topology every workstation connected to the main cable called the bus that's what you need to remember right therefore in the effect each workstation is directly connected to each other in the network so fine you got a fair idea about the bus topology so please understand some of the advantages and disadvantages also with respect to this topology the advantage is easy to connect to the computer or peripheral to the linear bus it's very pretty easy that as we have discussed in less cabling length is what we need uh, i have one more topology called star topology there i i'll spend a lot of cables so when you compare to that the when it comes to the bus topology i will be consuming very less is what you need to understand all right i have uh, listed out of you know pretty much uh, more points you know with respect to the disadvantages than advantages right entire network shutdowns if that in you know, that wire is not working that linear cable the main cable is not working if it is not working the entire network is down is what you need to remember the terminators are required at the both the ends i should have the terminator at the both the ends that's mandatory when i am using the bus topology difficult to identify the problem in the entire network since i am using the concept of hub okay i will have a lot of uh, problem to identify where exactly the problem is in the network and then not mean to be used to the standalone solution in the large building not suitable for the large building so this is the major drawbacks that we have with respect to the bus fine then what is the different other topology that we have we have something called star topology please understand i have the hub again i am using a device called hub okay what what's that we are trying to use yeah how exactly we are forming this network 
same uh, again i'm using the device here to connect all the devices but how exactly it is working so please understand all these devices whatever we have suppose if this device wants to communicate with this device so it should communicate through this device that's a major thing that we need to understand it's more or less it became like a bus topology why because suppose if this device is not working then i will not be able to communicate with any other devices that i have in the entire network that's a major drawback that i have with respect to this star topology so i will be consuming more cables when i compare to the bus topology but it's very easy to install it's very easy to extend the network that's what you need to remember with respect to the star let's uh, go through the points in this type of topology all the computers are connected to the single hub this is what they're speaking it can be a single hub or a switch through the cable this hub is a central node all other nodes are connected to the central node is what they are speaking about so i have some of the advantages and disadvantages with respect to the star topology that's the main thing that you need to remember when it comes to the star topology the first one is it is easy to install in the wires no disruption to the network when we are connecting or removing the devices if you are removing any other devices there will be no disturbance for the rest of the devices what you have in the network this is what they are trying to explain easy to detect the faults because individually you are connected to the network so that's a major advantage that we have so fine i have some of the disadvantages too what is that it requires more cabling as we discussed in the previous slide and if the hub switch or concentrator fails please understand so this point if that hub or whatever the device that you are using hub concentrator or a switch if it fails the entire network is gone is what they are trying to explain here and then more expensive than the linear bus topology this topology is more little more expensive since you are using more cabling okay that's a uh, you are using one concentrator and you are using more cabling when you compare to the bus topology little expensive you now compared to that is what you need to remember moving on to the next topology i have tree what exactly i have in tree so please listen and observe how many topology i will be using here it's a combination of two topology so can you identify what is that so guys let me start that Tree topology combines the characteristics of linear bus as well as star. How exactly linear bus are? So imagine this is a linear bus. Okay, imagine this is a star. So I have a concentrator. So for that, I have connected the systems. So here you will be able to find the star topology. Here you will be able to find the bus topology. So it's a combination of both topologies, two topologies. That's a linear bus as well as the star all right uh, it consists of group of star configured workstations connected to the linear bus backbone cable here i will be using the linear bus backbone cable so for this cable i will be connecting the star configured topology systems is what you need to remember all right uh, the tree network please understand tree network topology uses two or more star networks connected together obviously all right the central computers of uh, star networks are connected to the main bus tree networks as a bus topology for the star networks fine they're trying to explain like this which we have already discussed we have the star network and this star network is getting connected to the linear bus is what they are trying to explain with this point the main point that we need to understand here with respect to the advantages and disadvantages we understood how exactly that they have uh, arranged we need to understand the we need to spend time when it comes to the advantages and disadvantages the first point that they say is point to point wiring of individual segments that's a uh, one of the advantage that we have okay supported by several hardware and software vendors this topology is supported by several hardware and software vendors is what you need to remember and network can be easily extended so since we have the concept of hub okay so linear hub we can extend the network very easily and comfortably that's the advantage that we have 
what is the main disadvantage that we have more number of cable lengthy cables that you have to use when we compare to all other topologies is what you need to remember if the backbone again uh, we are using since we are using this cable suppose if this cable fails then we are done and over with the complete network is what you need to remember with this point all right uh, more difficult to configure and wire the other topologies than other topologies it's very complex since you are bringing two different topologies into one topology it's very quite complex uh, topology you are trying to form obviously it will be very difficult to wire the systems is what they are trying to explain so this is what you need to understand with respect to the tree topology we also have one more topology called mess topology what happens with the mess topology so please understand when it comes to mess topology so all the systems what we have imagine this is a system all the systems what we have all the systems are interconnected all the systems are interconnected they have the individual connection this system has got the separate connection to other system okay from this system to this system this system to this system this system to this system individual connections so the major drawback that you have is you will use uh, n number of cables if you have n number of systems you will end up in having a lot of cablings you will be establishing a point to point connection if you are using the mesh topology the major drawback is that but we are using this topology to establish a secure communication when we have a secure communication so obviously it is very costly when we compare to all other topologies so this is what you should understand with respect to the mesh topology by this we are completing the concept of different topologies and networks that we have so guys so i will be meeting you all in the next session with a different topic so till then please take care of your health thank you bye bye